Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm going to talk today about the persecution of Christians in North Korea. And I'm a born-again Christian. I have Jesus Christ in my heart here. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And I'm very proud of that. I have a good relationship with people uh, of, other, of other faiths, just of other faiths, other religions. I have a good relationship with them, as well as people who don't have a religion, atheists, people who do not believe in a God. And I'm very respectful with them, very genuine, and very nice to them. I, I firmly believe um, that Jesus is the only way. But at the same time, I don't believe in persecuting anybody because they have a different religion. I don't believe in arresting somebody because they have a different religion. And I do not believe in in the government taking away their right to worship, even though it's the God that I may not agree with. And, and did not worship there, but in South Korea I visited a Buddhist temple. I prayed to God before I entered the temple and did not meditate or do anything like that, but I did visit a Buddhist temple. Now, I did, when I was in Japan, visited some Shinto shrines as well, but prayed to God before I entered the, the temples or the shrines. All right, let's talk about the persecution of Christians in North Korea, okay? North Korea is the worst country to be a Christian. There are an estimated 400,000 Christians in North Korea. The population is 24 million. Okay, of those 400,000, 40,000 of them are in concentration camps. 40,000 of them. And if you're a Christian, they just do not punish you for being a Christian. They will punish your parents as well as your children. They have a three-generation punishment for Christians. And this one lady, she was sent to a concentration camp with her parents. She was released from the concentration camp. Sometimes you stay there for life, sometimes you don't, but... Her father died in the concentration camp because he was being overworked. She said her and her parents were treated like animals. And her father died from being overworked. And her mother died from starvation and mal malnutrition in the concentration camp. Just because they were Christian. Because they believed in Jesus Christ and did not worship North Korea's founder, Kim Il-sung, as a god. They, they put him in a concentration camp. The police will come into a lot of homes, the North Korean police, North Korean military, without notice and try to look for Bibles. They'll search for Bibles. And if they find a Bible on you, if you have a Bible in the home, you can be executed right there. You can be executed without a trial and they can shoot you right there, which does happen sometimes. And Christians have been executed without a trial before. And they also, but a lot of times they go to the concentration camp. But executions of Christians are not uncommon though. Executions of Christians are not uncommon in North Korea. And this organization, Open Doors, did a really good 18-minute documentary on this, on the persecution of Christians in North Korea. And North Korea's founder, Kim Il-sung, as I've said in previous videos, he, growing up, he grew up in a Protestant church. But when he became ruler of North Korea, he replaced God with himself. He burned 2,000 Christian churches as well as Buddhist temples to the ground. And what they would do to Christians when North Korea was first founded is they would tie rocks around their ankles and the Christians would drown. They'd be thrown into the sea and they would drown and they would die a slow and painful death just because they're a Christian. And this should not be going on. This should not be going on whatever faith you adhere to. This should not be going on. The government should not be this repressive or repressive at all because of your religion. I get along with people from other religions. I firmly believe Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. But I don't oppress people who have different faiths or different beliefs or different religions than I do. And I have I have never been called out or um, labeled or cursed by people of a different faith. That has never happened. And th the same thing with atheists. I've never been called out or cursed by them either. And I've, and I've had working relationships as well as, um, as well as when I was in South Korea, I had, I had students of all different faiths and I had some students who were atheists and some students who were Buddhist and there were no problems. There were no issues. Not at all. 
so back to back to the persecution of Christians in North Korea. The North Korean Christians who do make it to South Korea, who do defect, a lot of them want to go back into North Korea and preach the gospel to to unreached Christians and also to help the Christians that are still in North Korea help them escape. And that takes a lot of guts to do so. And they still pray for the people who oppress them. That takes a lot of guts to do so. And I'm going to speak out against this and call this a, call what North Korea does to the Christians a crime against humanity because it is. It's a crime against humanity and Christians in North Korea don't mean anybody any harm. And I'm going to call on it and speak out on it. Is that what everybody should do? I don't know. You, you have to look at your own relationship with God. I can't... I don't know your relationship with God, okay? You have to make that decision for yourself. Or is it, this is what I need to do. This is what needs to be done in my situation. I don't think I'm... Like, like I said, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm superior. Um, I don't think I'm superior at all. I have to... I have to work and study really hard a lot of times sometimes just to get through the day. That that's not it. Now my determination thanks to thanks to God, thanks to Jesus wins out, my determination wins out. But North Korea is not known well enough for this and they need to be known for it. If they ever attack South Korea, I don't believe they'll conquer it. They came close in the Korean War but they failed. Had they conquered it, a lot of Christians in South Korea would be going through the same thing. North Korea would be one country under a totalitarian regime, and all of Korea, you could not have freedom of religion. Now, they set up in Pyongyang, they have a Catholic church and a Protestant church as well as some Buddhist temples, but those are only illusions. So, for the few foreigners that do come to North Korea, or visit North Korea, the few foreigners that do come there, they think they have freedom of religion, but they don't. They don't have freedom of religion. And there, this, no, there's a handful of true, sincere Christians that are allowed to go to these churches. But Bradley Martin wrote a book, and I'm going to put quotes because it means it sarcastically, under the fatherly care of the dear leader. That means he was being facetious with the book. Man, it's not really fatherly care that the Kim regime gives. But when he went to the church, what happened with him was he he saw this one guy smoking a cigarette and he had a Kim Il-sung lapel on, the founder of North Korea, and he took the lapel off before entering the church. There's nothing of Kim Il-sung in those churches, but it's an illusion. There, there are a few sincere Christians, and they will tell the Western journalist, as Bradley Martin notes, they will tell the Western journalist, there's really not freedom of religion here. There's just a few of us that are allowed to truly worship to set up the illusion. So they set up an illusion to it. They set up an illusion for it and they lie about it. So they need to be called on it. And I'm going to call them on it. And I pray that other people will call them on it. Because it needs to happen. But you have to find... You have to make sure that's what you feel compelled to do. Um, even though I pray God would lead you in that direction, it's up to God to do that. And he may have different plans for you. A lot of you guys, it probably does. So, anyways, hope everybody's doing well. Take care, and God bless, and bye-bye. Bye-bye.